A lot going on in the East Bay these days, and joining us to talk about a few of those subjects is Oakland Mayor Libby Schaff. Thanks for being with us today. Thank you, Anne. Now, violence on a lot of people's minds. I hate to start on a down note, but uh, you know, something I feel like we talk about every time we chat. But you know, we had the situation on Sunday with the shooting at the the youth football game. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? It's just it's just a reoccurring problem. It is, and uh, we were so heartened to receive some very good news from the state of California this week that hopefully will make a transformative impact on ending violence. Um, it is a $6 million grant from the Cal Vips program. Uh, and that's really thanks to our assembly member, Buffy Wicks. She was the author of this expanded funding. We know from experience these programs work and that we can prevent violence before it even happens. In Oakland, we're gonna use this money to try three new things on top of what has worked in the past. One is behavioral cognitive therapy. And that is really working with repeat offenders and getting to kind of rewire that reaction to personal conflict, being violence, uh, changing that reaction mode. Second, we're going to be expanding this work to the whole family unit, not just the individual. And finally, we're investing in changes at the community level. A lot more of those street outreach workers, violence interrupters in the community, in the parts of the city that have been experiencing more violence, as well as physical changes, things like more lighting, possible street redesigns to actually create a safer physical environment. So, and those things give me hope. I hope to never endure another tragedy of a young person shot in Oakland. Um, I am, I do want to report they are in stable condition, um, but this is the kind of thing we just cannot tolerate as a community. Well, right. I mean, at that point, you, nobody's safe anywhere. You, you know, in the middle of a Sunday afternoon at a youth football league at a high school, it's just, um, you know, next level for sure. So talking about those strategies, uh, it does seem like a different approach, the cognitive behavioral therapy. But how do you get these people to even come to the table? I mean, it's hard to get a lot of my friends to even consider therapy, you know, to say nothing of somebody who's, you know, in the gang world. Yeah. Well, listen, we've been very successful because those street outreach workers have actually been on the redemptive journey themselves. They are trusted messengers. They actually often have personal relationships with the very population we are trying to reach. So that has been an extremely successful path. We also work with our partners in probation sometimes to offer this as an alternative to punishment. Uh, we want the violence to stop. Uh, that is far more effective than punishing people after the fact. So it sounds like we need some street soldiers to get out there to identify these people who might be open to that sort of uh, therapy. Uh, where are we at with recruiting people like that? Well, you know, we have already tripled the investment in our Department of Violence Prevention just through the city's regular budgeting process. This new $6 million grant from the state of California is going to allow us to do even more. So we've already seen an increase of new folks. And remember, you know, the Department of Violence Prevention, as Chief Cespeda says, it's, it's not a building. It really is a network. And we have partnered with some incredibly effective organizations like Youth Alive and the California Youth Outreach Program. These are things that have really allowed us to dig deeply into the community and get to the people that need our message and our support most of all. Okay, so we're looking at this grant, which is going to be a huge Kickstarter. What's the timeline on that? When can we expect this to actually start materializing? Well, we have an RFP right now out to increase that network of organizations that are supporting us, and that's based on the funding book for the grant. We will have three years to deploy these incredible resources. So know that this is not just a flash in the pan. This is a longer term investment in deep work to stop violence before it happens.
All right, we will keep an eye on that. Uh, meantime, you're holding a few town hall meetings, trying to meet with the people directly. What, uh, what can we expect from that? Well, and you're not the only person who should get to ask the mayor questions. <laughs> Every resident has that right. And so I'm doing a series of town halls. I've never done this back-to-back -back plan before, but Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday next week, I'm going to be in different parks across the city, starting at Arroyo Viejo in East Oakland, moving up to uh, a park in North Oakland, and then Colby Park, and then coming to Central Oakland to San Antonio Park uh, to finish out the week, six o'clock each night, and it's just a mic. You can say what's on your mind. You can ask questions, but this is your chance to speak directly to your mayor. And you know you're going to be hearing a lot of criticism when it comes to people and their safety. Uh, how are you planning to, I mean, how do you even you know, look at somebody who's concerned about walking out their own door and, and try to make them feel better? And I respect that. And I am not only going to talk about what the city has done, what it's going to do, but I'm also going to try and recruit people to be part of the solution. There are things that each and every one of us can do to contribute to safety, to ending homelessness, to making the city cleaner and more beautiful. And so I will also be coming with a resource list of both one-shot ways and ongoing ways to actually contribute to solving some of Oakland's most vexing problems. Uh, and you know, I live here, I have kids here. So I absolutely respect how people are feeling in this moment. And I am not coming to invalidate those feelings, but to validate them and turn those concerns into action. All right. Another uh, big controversial topic right now, uh, Oakland, San Francisco, and down in L.A., these safe injection sites. At the, the face of it, a lot of people are concerned about, you know, allowing people to use illegal drugs on a city-sanctioned site. But there are benefits in potentially getting people out of the dangerous situation of dying on the street. This is in the governor's hands right now. What are you saying to him to, to try to get this to a go? You know, I'm saying to him something that he likes to say to Californians, which is the status quo is wholly unacceptable. The level of loss of life, of harm that is being caused by our particularly opiate addiction, a crisis is just inhumane. And so to allow three cities that want to try an intervention that has actually been studied and proven in Vancouver, Canada. And I had a chance a few years ago to talk to the mayor there. And he said he was a convert. He had originally opposed the idea, but he has seen that one, it saves lives, it prevents harm, it actually gets more people into treatment and it actually minimizes the impacts on neighborhoods. Plus their study showed that they did not cause any increase in drug use. And of course, they have seen no overdose deaths in those centers. That is a huge thing. And I don't know about you, but I have friends who have lost their children to drug overdoses. This is another trauma no one should have to endure. No. I think we should try what we can to end it. Yeah, anybody who's walked around, say, the, the streets of the Tenderloin uh, knows that it's happening every day. Um, all over, all over both cities. So, okay, we'll see what the governor ends up deciding on that. Did you get any indication from him? You know, I, I've reached out to him. I have not gotten an answer, but I feel like he has given signals in the past to yeah. indicate this is something he would support. Uh, the idea of pilots where you're going to try something and evaluate it before you try and spread it uh, widely, I think is a smart approach. He's always been someone that has believed in innovation. So I actually feel very optimistic he is going to support this. Okay. Keep an eye on that as well. Uh, what is the latest with the A's? <laughs> they stay in, they go in, we're going to court. What's going on? <laughs> you know, with this complex project, every day there's always the good news and the bad news. The bad news is there is yet another lawsuit. Not a surprise to me at all. Um, I have found it ironic, though, that uh, 
a company like Schnitzer Steel is claiming that there was insufficient environmental analysis in the recent decision to remove Howard Terminal from port priority use. This from a company that has been successfully uh, sued several times and found in violation of their own environmental uh, regulations. Um, but I know that BCDC fully expected this legal challenge, and that is why they were so professional and so thorough in their analysis. So I feel confident that that lawsuit will be resolved in favor of moving Howard Terminal forward. But the good news is, Anne, um, the state of California just awarded Oakland an $11 million infrastructure grant that's going to help improve safe connection between places like the West Oakland BART station and the downtown BART station and Jack London Square, the waterfront. Now, these are improvements that are needed right now, today, no you know, ballpark or no ballpark, but these improvements are required for the ballpark project to go forward. So $11 million on that path to actually getting this done. Okay, and uh, what is the latest from the team on this? Do you feel like they're still one foot in, one foot out? You know, uh, we are making tremendous progress. There's a little bit of a pause because a lot of people are on vacation right now, but um, it has been absolutely full steam ahead, a lot of enthusiasm, a lot of work going in to really trying to get a fully negotiated and executed deal in front of this city council before the end of the year. All right. We'll be following that too. Anything else you want to talk about today? You know, those are the, I think the hot topics. Um, and I'm sure there's next week is going to be an eventful week. So stay tuned. I might be talking to you next week. Okay. Looking forward to it. Thanks for your time today. Oakland Mayor Libby Sheff. We appreciate it on CBS News Bay Area. Thank you, Anne. All right. Always a pleasure. All right. Thanks. Good luck with those town halls. Thank you. Yeah, I know people are not in a good mood right now. Yeah. So I do need the luck.